Welcome back to numerical methods. So in this video, I'll be talking about lax Wendroff scheme, which is second order in time and second order in space. So in the last video, uh, we talked about leapfrog and lax Fredericks. So lax Fredericks was first order in time and second order in space. Leapfrog was second order in time and second order in the space. So this is similar to leapfrog, but uh, uh, it's gone through a different derivation to, uh, to come up with the final discretization. So in lax Fredericks, we do two-step discretization. In the first step, we pretty much follow lax Fredericks we do the lax Fredrix with half time step and then in the next time in the next uh, in the next step we do a leapfrog for basically the half time step so in the first time step uh, if you remember from leapfrog we had uh, in leap uh, in i'm sorry in lax Fredrix we had n plus 1 at point j was equal to 1 half uh, the variable of time n and uh, j plus 1 and j minus 1. So if I go back to lax Fredericks, so this is lax Fredericks to calculate anything at n plus 1. We need to know at time n, as well as uh, j plus 1, j minus 1, which we got the average. I'm sorry, j plus 1. Well, actually, let me go back even further. Uh, yep, yeah, right here. So we had n plus 1 minus average of. Uh, j plus 1, j minus 1 at time n equals minus v times central difference in j. And then we had j plus 1, j minus 1. So if you look carefully, you see that the average of j plus 1, j minus 1 is j. So this means that we are centering our spatial coordinate at xj here. Again, the average of j plus 1, j minus 1 is j. So we center our x coordinate as j as well. And this is j2. So if you look carefully, basically we're centering the x coordinate at point j, and then we center the time point at if this is n plus 1 and this is n. So basically uh, we are putting the, uh, the time point on the average of n and n plus 1, which is n plus 1 half. So let's go back to lax Randroff. In lax Randroff, Instead of instead of centering the x point at x j, we're going to put it at uh, j plus half. So we're going to do a half time step in delta x. So that means everywhere we had uh, j minus one, we're going to replace j. So this used to be j minus one, we're going to put j. This used to be j minus one, we're going to put j. Such that the average of these two would be j plus half. The average of j plus one and j would be j plus half. And again the Left hand side used to be at time j plus 1, now we're going to have a j, uh, j plus half. So, uh, so this is basically a lax Fredericks for x equal j plus half, and uh, our, our time point would be n plus half. So we are stepping half time step forward and uh, half delta x forward as well. Now we're going to have another max Fredericks step with uh, half time step forward, but then half delta x backward. So in that case, instead of j plus 1 and j, we're going to get j, j minus 1. And here, uh, j plus 1 minus j becomes uh, j, j minus 1. So we, we push back everything one unit such that uh, the center of these two would be j minus one half as opposed to j plus one half. So now we got two, uh, two, two variables, and n plus half j plus half, and n plus half j minus half. So this was done in lax Frederick step for half time step. For the next half time step, we're going to use leapfrog. And in leapfrog, you remember, it was n plus 1 and n minus 1 here. But now we have n plus 1 and n because we are stepping half-time step forward, not just full-time step. 
And so because of that, the time point for uh, these two terms used to be n, and now because of half time study, it has to be n plus half. And uh, the x, uh, the x index, so here used to be j plus 1 and j minus 1, but because of half time step, we're going to have j plus half and j minus half. So uh, these two variables we calculated already in the first time step, so we're going to plug in these two into here, and we're going to get the final equation, which is lax Randolph. So in lax Randolph again, we do half time step, in the first half time step, we use Lax Fredericks. In the next half time step, we use Leapfrog with the variables we calculated in the first time step. So pictorially, you can think of this uh, space time coordinates. So initially, we start at time n. We're going to use these three points at j minus 1, j, and j plus 1. So using these three with one half step, with, with half time step, Using Lax Fredericks, we're going to calculate these two red points, which is at j minus half, n plus half, and then j plus half, n plus half. So from here to here is Lax Fredericks. Then we're going to use these two points together with the middle point down here, basically using these three points to calculate that point, which is leapfrog. So remember the leapfrog, we had two staggered grid, and now you can see that why it goes in a, in a diagonal fashion. So we're going to use now these, these two that we calculated using first step plus this one to get that one. So that means we're going to use n plus half and j minus half. We're going to use n and j, n plus half, j, j plus half to calculate n plus one and j. So these two we're calculating the first time step and then use these two with that to get this, which is the second half time step. All right, so let's go back and, and look at the final equation. So the final equation would be uh, replacing these two variables using these two. All right, so here I have a quick review of the methods we learned so far for advection equation. So in advection equation, we have du dt plus v du dx equals zero. The first thing we studied was upwind. In upwind, the method is really dependent on the, in which direction the wind is coming or the which direction flow is, flow is coming. So if you think of v to be positive from uh, left to right, then we have to use backward Euler because information is propagating from left to right, so you have to use the points behind you. So that's why we have j minus 1 if you're sitting at point j. Uh, we talked about forward in time and center in the space. So this is an implicit, this is also explicit method. Upwind is also explicit method. So in here, instead of using uh, instead of using forward or backward you and upwind, we're going to use center difference. So that's the difference between upwind and forward in time center in the space. Then we talk about Leapfrog. Now, leapfrog is a is different from forward in time. So, leapfrog is actually central in time, central in the space. So that's why instead of having n here, we're gonna have n minus one. So this is until the central difference in time, and the rest, which is central difference space, is not changed. Uh, then we talked about lax Friedrichs and lax Friedrichs. Instead of having so we got this um, forward in time, central in the space, and replace this term by the average of j plus 1, j minus 1, which we got here. So this is very similar to forward in time, center in space, only u and j has changed. And then the last one we just talked about is lax Rendroff, where uh, we, we basically follow uh, a, a combination of lax Fredericks for half time step and leapfrog for the next half time step. So down the road we get an equation like this, which is pretty much like uh, forward in time. So it's pretty much like forward in time, center in space. So this thing is forward in time, but then this thing is center in space. And then because this is this is pretty much like leapfrog as well, instead of having time in here, we're gonna have 
a time av a, the, the, uh, the average of these two, which is n plus n plus 1 divided by 2 is n plus half. All right. And you, if you ask where these variables come from, well, for these variables, we have to use a second equation. So lax squared is actually a combination of two equations. And if you put them together, then lax off becomes something like this, where alpha now is our uh, non-dimensionalized velocity. And uh, now suddenly we have an alpha squared show up. So to calculate any variable at time n plus 1, we need a time n, uh, j, and then nj plus 1 and nj minus 1. Basically, to get this value, we need to know these three. So with these three, we're going to calculate that one. So that is the difference between this method and, uh, and leapfrog. Is leapfrog, if you remember, we had two, two grids two grid points uh, which they didn't uh, they didn't cross talk but this time actually we don't have two grids so we're going to use three points to calculate that one and it doesn't show like a diamond flow of um, flow of information so now here we have basically we have to use these three to calculate that as opposed to leapfrog which was using these three to calculate that one all right, so before getting to the simulation, we want to we want to talk about uh, stability of uh, lax window. So to do the stability analysis, we use our von Neumann uh, technique. So in the von, in von Neumann uh, analysis uh, uh, for stability, we replace all generic variables at time n and xj uh, by C raised to n power and exponential i k x j. So if we plug these into our max Vendorf equation here and do the math and cancel common terms, we end up having c uh, to be one minus you know one minus i times alpha sine plus alpha squared cosine minus one. Now we want the magnitude of this to be less than one. So to get the magnitude, we multiply this by its complex conjugate, which is this. Then we go ahead and draw c squared as a function of alpha. So we're going to vary. So for a fixed delta x, we're going to vary k, which means our k delta x can vary between 0 to 2 pi. Other than that, this becomes periodic, so it doesn't make uh, any difference if you just uh, focus our focus uh, on uh, k delta x between 0 and 2 pi. All right, for that k delta x, we're going to change alpha and see how c squared changes. So I'm going to show you the MATLAB script for stability analysis. So here's the MATLAB script. And what I did was uh, I changed alpha from 0.8 to 1 to 1.2. I calculate the x and y component of c. This is the x component of c, if you remember. That is the y component of c. And then my c is going to be the x plus i which is imaginary number times the y so this is my z and i'm going to get the magnitude of z so the magnitude of z would be the x squared plus y squared so now i'm going to change alpha and then see how my magnitude changes so this is the result you get all right so my alpha goes from 0.8 to 1 to 2 from blue to red to black and you see that for for blue the magnitude is always less than one so yeah so the magnitude never reaches to one for alpha equal one we we basically uh right so we basically touch at this point you see the magnitude is uh yeah, this is at the uh, at real part, real part zero and imaginary part one, imaginary part uh, on the vertical axis. So you see that the magnitude is exactly one, and if you go to alpha equal to two, the max and the the amplitude of c goes to bigger than one. So the limit is alpha should be less than or equal to one. So this is the stability analysis for Lax-Renoir. All right. So in the next video, I'm going to show you some example 
uh, of using relaxed conduct to solve advection equations. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.